Even in this day and age, there are still many cases left unsolved. Most of them are classified as unsolved due to negligence during the initial stages of the investigation. But unsolved cases are not considered perfect crimes. In the future, science and determination can solve these cases. There is a case in Korea that remains unsolved to this day, but officials are continuing to look for the suspect. It's the Pocheon Middle School Girl murder case from 2003. The case involves Om Hyuna, a second-year middle school student who was killed on November 5, 2003, in the city of Pocheon in Gyeonggi Province. Today, we will take a look at one of the most popular unsolved cases from Korea, the Pocheon Middle School Girl murder case, also known as the Manicure murder case. Around 4 p.m. on November 5th, 2003, Om Hyuna and her four friends were hanging out after school at a friend's house. They lost track of time, and Hyuna, who promised she would be home at a certain time, was late. She decided to take a shortcut alley home. When she entered the alley around 6.18 p.m., she called her mom and told her she would be home soon. The distance between Hyuna's school and home was about 800 meters, meaning it would only take 10 minutes to come and go. But after that last phone call with her mom, Hyuna was unreachable. She disappeared without a trace in that alley, which was less than 10 minutes from her home. Police searched for her, but didn't have any leads after more than three weeks. Then on the 23rd day since she went missing, on November 28th, and again on December 22nd, her belongings were found on top of heaps of trash. The first discovery of her belongings, a bag, socks, a school uniform necktie, gloves, and notebook was at a site in Binnakdong in Gyeonggi's Ujongbu, 7.4 kilometers from Hyuna's home. The second discovery was at a pile of trash near a road work site, also in Minnakdong in Gyeonggi's Ujongbu. Her cell phone and sneakers were found on top of the trash as if they were meant to be seen. But Hyuna was nowhere to be seen. Then on February 3rd, 2004, soldiers from the 6th Corps Communications Unit, a military base where her father had been serving as a command sergeant major, joined police in their search for Hyuna. They thoroughly searched the area it was believed she had gone missing. Five days later, on February 8th at 9 a.m., 95 days after she went missing, Hyuna's naked body was found in a drainage pipe in Gyeonggi's Pocheon. The site the body was found was two kilometers from where her belongings were first discovered on November 28, 2003, and six kilometers from her home. The drainage pipe where her body was found was covered with a box of a 29-inch TV. The upper part of Hyuna's body was badly decomposed, making it impossible for authorities to carry out an autopsy on it. But the lower half of her body was clean. Since she was found naked, police carried out their investigation with a focus on rape. But there were no signs that she was tied up, no injuries, and no signs of rape, such as semen. The drainage pipe her body was discovered was close to a shortcut that was only used by people from that neighborhood. Experts said it seemed as if a person who knew the lay of the land planned the crime and carried it out. There were two adult shops on both corners of the road, and they both opened at 6 p.m. and closed at 11 p.m. Police suspected the culprit abandoned the body after 11 p.m. When Hyuna's body was found, the lower part of her body was twisted to the left while her head was twisted to the right. It was as if her body in that state could have fit into the TV box that covered the drainage pipe. The police focused on the TV box as a clue for some time, but it became clear that it had nothing to do with the case, and it faced a dead end. 
Another name for this case is the Pochan manicure case, as Hyuna's fingernails and toenails were covered in red nail polish at the time of her discovery. Police took note of this and looked into everyone who purchased red nail polish in that area. They even investigated stores that sold nail polish, but there were no CCTV cameras at the time, and people didn't seem to remember making the police hit another wall. A nail polish store employee who had worked there for three years said a man once came in and had trouble deciding which nail polish to purchase and finally decided on a darker red color. The employee mentioned the fact that it was rare for men to buy nail polish. It turned out the red nail polish that the victim had on her fingernails and toenails didn't come from a popular brand making police waste the time of their personnel who worked so hard to pinpoint the origin of the polish. Hyuna didn't usually wear nail polish, and at the time, the school she went to didn't allow its students to put on nail polish. Also, it was obvious that the nail polish on her fingernails and toenails was applied side to side and not top to bottom. According to experts, the nail polish was applied after Hyuna's death. Even her fingernails and toenails were trimmed, making authorities bring up the possibility that the suspect had fetishes and sexual perversions. Criminal profiling technology and equipment didn't exist in 2004, and so police faced many obstacles during their investigation. The owner of a stationery store in front of Hyuna's school was named the prime suspect. The investigation team thought it was suspicious the store had a dark room for shooting ID pictures, and so they focused on its owner. One witness said they saw a carnival van at the site of the case, adding the suspect could have used the carnival to kidnap the victim. The owner of the stationery store owned a carnival, and the owner is said to have often visited a picture frame factory across the street from the site where Hyuna's body was found. Women's hair was discovered in the trunk of the owner's carnival, and luminol found in his darkroom. The investigation into the case seemed to be progressing, but luminol can react to rusty iron fillings, so the owner's alibi checked out, excluding him from the list of suspects. Then police kept their eye on 20 men with perverted dispositions in the Pocheon and Ujongbu areas. They also came to the realization that nail polish is put on the dead bodies of young women in Japan and India during funeral procedures. And so, they detained 30 illegal aliens. But the following day, around 10,000 illegal aliens fled the Pochon area, causing the police's investigation to hit a snag once again. It was difficult to figure out at the time the red nail polish part of the case partly due to a lack of scientific investigative techniques. The case became more of a mystery. Then, 15 years later, the case was dug up on an investigative journalism TV program in 2019. At the time the body was discovered, it was badly damaged, prompting police to close the case as the cause of death was unknown. But in 2019, experts told an interview that the victim likely died of cervical compression caused by pushing the neck and head back. In terms of the lower part of the victim's body being clean and the fact that no semen was found, profilers said the suspect didn't have the goal of raping her at first. They said that with the exception of the school uniform's necktie, the uniform itself the victim's undergarments and stockings were not found, and this was because the suspect kept them as trophies. In other words, they suggested the possibility that the suspect is a pervert who is turned on by the belongings of the victim. The reason this case came back into the spotlight 15 years later was because of a tip-off about a similar unsolved case which had a similar storyline. The person who made the tip-off had an office job in Pucheon at the time. She said one month before Hyuna's case, on October 31st, 2003, on her way home, she got in a white car that was waiting in front of a service center and almost got kidnapped. 
she provided a composite of the suspect. She said she wanted to refuse, but the driver was coercive, and so she got on. The driver asked her age, and she told she was 20 years old. The victim said the driver was taken aback by this. The driver's fingernails were neatly trimmed, and they had clear nail polish on. The car passed its destination, and the victim opened the door and tried to escape. The driver stopped the car and dropped her off and made a U-turn towards a nearby middle school. Profilers said the suspect likely was looking for an easy target, not an adult female who was strong. She said if she reported the incident at the time, the disappearance and death of Hyuna wouldn't have happened. She said she was too scared to report it. She instead went to her hometown to rest and came back a week later only to see a banner that Hyuna was missing. She said she knew for sure the driver who tried to kidnap her was the suspect in Hyuna's case, but said she kept quiet for a long time because she was so scared. She had made the tip off as she was a mother now and sympathized with having a family. Her explanation that the driver in her case had clear nail polish on and fingernails were neatly trimmed showed the person who attempted to kidnap her was out of the ordinary. The suspect in Hyuna's case was very obsessed with fingernails and even applied red nail polish on his victim. The man was described as having a bright face as if he had makeup on and a slender body with thin fingers. In 2003, he was between 20 and 30, which would currently make him between 40 and 50 years old. He's between 170 to 175 centimeters tall. He has brown eyes and brown hair. He is said to have had thin fingers, neatly trimmed fingernails, and no facial hair, and not too much hair overall. Hypnotherapy was used on the person who made the tip-off during a TV broadcast to see her memories more clearly. It was through this that it was found the suspect rode a white car from a service center. After this person's story was featured on unanswered questions, another person came forward with information. This person worked at a car service center at the time. They remembered a colleague who had white and twinkling hands like the man in the story. This person said this man had an obsession with keeping his hands clean and would wash his hands for 30 minutes after work. They said this man would apply clear nail polish. They said this man would run away even if he saw an insect and had feminine tendencies and was introverted. The person that gave the second tip off said this man and murder didn't really fit, but can't rule out its possibility. Police assumed this red dye could have car paint ingredients in it. They were wondering why they couldn't find nail polish in the area with the same ingredients. They also thought that a car that was at the service center for repairs could have been used for the crime. But it was found that this service center employee died of cancer five to six years after the case, sometime between 2008 and 2009. But based on the tip-offs, authorities reinvestigated the ingredients of the nail polish on the hands of Hyuna. They found that it had a car paint ingredients, making the service center employee the prime suspect. But all this was presumed to this day, police haven't found a single piece of clear evidence making this a cold case. With the consent of her parents, a ghost marriage was held for Hyuna and Hong Yusun, who died at a military base. When Hyuna went missing, Hong's mother put up banners and helped in any way she could. This acquainted the two families. They chose Hong for the ghost wedding to protect Hyuna from all the torture she went through. Hyuna's life ended at such a young age. It's an even more heart-wrenching case as her parents hope she will not be too lonely in the afterlife. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.